Today we've got exciting news from Canada. We've got hurricanes. Gordon and I are booked on a cruise line we have never sailed on before. And then also we have got lots of onboard updates and so much to talk about. So well, let's get started. Hi there, this is Allison with Let's Go Travel Tips. Today is Monday, it is September 26th of 2022. And like I said, we have so much to talk about today. And you know what, all of it is really important. And so I would say there's no fluff today. And so just sit back, relax and um, en enjoy and then put in the comments your comments. So first of all, let's talk about um, what's going on with Canada. So today, September 26th, Canada made a really huge announcement and I want to thank I was watching for it anyway but a couple of you our let's go family members were so kind to send me information on it and I want to say thank you so very much so first of all today in their press conference Canada announced that they are doing away with the travel restrictions their quarantine requirements everything to do with visiting Canada I think this is surely long overdue and an excellent step forward for not only for Canada for everyone wanting to go to Canada for any reason and then also for people of course who want to go on a cruise if you're new around here Canada is involved if you go on a cruise to Alaska and then also those um, Canada and New England cruises on the eastern coast of the United States and then also sometimes they depart go to Canada and then up and go um, further um, afield and so it really affects a lot of a a lot of cruises so this is great news so as of um, October 1st is the day that it starts you're not going to have to do the arrive can anymore. You're not going to have to provide proof of vaccination. You're not going to have to do any um, pre-arrival testing. So they took away the requirement to be tested. And then you also are not going to have to, um, like I said, no COVID-19 quarantine or isolation. And then you're also not going to have to monitor and report if you um, develop any symptoms of COVID while you are in Canada. So this really makes things much easier for travelers. And so, um, um, you know, I follow very closely what the cruise line protocols are, so I took a quick glance, and I don't see any updates on any of the major cruise lines' websites. So I checked Princess, Holland America, I checked um, Celebrity, Royal Caribbean, Carnival. They have not updated their websites yet, but I do have the announcements that Princess Cruise Line made and Holland America made, and... Um, so it says, Princess says, with today's announcement from the Transport Canada, it'll remove all COVID-19 requirements to enter the country. Princess Cruises is prepared to welcome all guests on cruises visiting, arriving, or departing from Canadian ports, including its Canada and New England voyages and Alaska cruises, where the cruise line is the industry leader. They wanted to point out they're the industry leader there. All Princess um, Alaska cruise tours feature Canada as part of their idea itineraries and it says that princess is in the process of notifying their guests who are affected by this change like i said october 1st that's going away and i am really excited to see if the cruise lines leave anything else that they are going to require so if any of you are booked on any of those cruises and you have heard of, from princess or from any other cruise line please let us know what you're hearing the protocols are going to be or if they are just going to let everybody go ahead and cruise also holland america made a very similar statement now a really cool thing though with Holland America is this new feature that they've got and so um, let me tell you it says let me tell you this first I got so excited it says under the new procedures there is no longer a vaccination requirement for people entering Canada and so Holland America is also lifting that requirement for their cruises now on the Holland America website they have not done an update yet um, specifically to say here's what is going to be required if you are departing from a right in or visiting Canada on your cruise and so I do look forward to that but they have this really cool new um, option on their website that you can go there and um, it's like this voyage lookup thing I printed it out here kind of big so that you can get an idea on it and I'll have um, Gordon um, link to it but all you have to do is when you go to hollandamerica.com across the top it there's a place that says travel requirements click on that and then on the next the page that it takes you to you can um, the little button says something about like 
um, COVID requirements by location, something like that. You click on that and it brings it up so that you get to enter your booking number, your first and last name, and then it brings up what the requirements um, are for the cruise that you are booked on. Now, I did do it for our group cruise um, next year. Next year, we've got that group cruise that is going to be on the Holland America Eurodom leaving on May 27th for seven days, uh, round trip out of Seattle up to Alaska. And that is going to be a phenomenal cruise. It's going to be extraordinary. So if you'd like to come, just send me an email. But anyway, I entered the information about that and it said that the um, requirements have not been um, for formulated yet. The, the direct quote is, it says, this specific booking and or voyage does not yet have published protocols for COVID-19 vaccination and testing requirements. Please check back closer to the embarkation date for updates. But I think that this is really cool. Nobody has done this yet. And so kudos to Holland America for doing this. I think this is excellent. I would say that the second best is probably... Um, it's probably a tie between Holland America and Princess, but Norwegian, they have on theirs like a list of requirements by country. And so any country that requires anything different than just um, the very basic protocols that, um, that Norwegian requires, you can read what they are by country. And I think that's really helpful because it helps you know if you're going on a cruise what to expect in the different places that have anything you need to be concerned about. So that's excellent. Another thing that I think is really great is the president of Holland America released a statement and said that he really feels that they have seen really good, strong demand for their cruises next year in 2023 um, that involve Canada, but also this will really help because it takes away the worry of what people are going to have to experience when they go on these sailings. And I will be honest, um, when I chose our group cruise, I chose it out of Seattle because you never know, um, because they had not taken away these requirements and I didn't want any uncertainty with our group. I didn't want anyone to get to Vancouver, be randomly tested, which by the way, that's gone as well, and then not get to come with us. And so kind of think about what your tolerance is for worrying about things and choose your cruise that way. But I would say that sailing out of Vancouver is extraordinary because you get to go up through the Inland Passage up through, um, well, you can see it on my cruise vlogs when I got to go um, at the end of June. Um, I got to sail out of Vancouver round trip on the Koningsdam and it is just spectacular scenery and you only get that coming into Vancouver. They don't do that route coming um, into Seattle or departing from Seattle. So that is something important to keep in mind. Now, the next thing is really very exciting news. Gordon and I are indeed booked on a cruise line that we have never been on before. And it actually is a cruise line that I have been so excited to try because to me, everything that I hear, it sounds like it is, good as prin is as good as Princess, but is a notch above. And maybe it's two notches above. I'm going to let you know. Um, so we are booked on the Celebrity Cruise sailing on December 11th through the 18th. It's round trip out of Fort Lauderdale on the Celebrity Reflection. I am really excited to go on that ship for a lot of reasons. And one of them is, you know, our Let's Go family member, Jeffrey, he said that if you really love Princess, then the Solstice class is maybe what you're going to enjoy the most. And so the reflection is in the Solstice class. It's actually the last Solstice class ship that they made before they moved on and started on the uh, making the other ships like the Apex um, in the... Um, in the uh in the series above that it's escaping me right now uh, in the edge class there we go and so i am very equally like so excited to try an edge class cruise so keep um on those ships so keep your eye here because i'm working on that but we are so excited so let me tell you the itinerary first of all it's in eastern caribbean so uh december 11th is a sunday and we are going to go on monday to nassau the bahamas tuesday will be us at sea day wednesday we get to call in charlotte amali st thomas Thursday is in Phillipsburg, St. Martin, which I'm so excited to go there. And then Friday and Saturday are sea days. And then on Sunday, we end up back at... Um at Fort Lauderdale. So I am really excited. I'm going to get to show you lots of things. I'll share the entire experience with you so that you know if you should be thinking about cruising on Celebrity. I am really excited to show you all of this and I'll have lots for us to talk about and think about together. So just wanted to let you know that. Now as I think about sailing on Celebrity, um, you know, Carnival keeps having, Carnival Cruise Line keeps having trouble with people. Um, 
uh, fights breaking out. And um, I know this is funny, but I could not resist mentioning it. Did you all see that over the weekend in the NASCAR race that one driver got out of his car and went and started punching the other driver? Um, for some reason, that just made me think, oh, uh, carnival. <laughs> So um, nothing against anybody, nothing against anybody of our Let's Go family members who cruise on Carnival because I know that you are not the kind of people that are in fights on board. But I just found that rather ironic given the fact that now um, Princess is sponsoring a car in NASCAR. Um, it doesn't it doesn't mean I have anything against NASCAR because I don't um, at all. Like, I not at all. And so um, did I tell you all I got to go to the Indy 500 when I was in high school? I had really good seats. Um, anyway, so. So I'm not against NASCAR at all. I just thought that was really interesting. So the next thing though, I think it's really important that we talk about the weather because right now we are having a lot of cruises impacted by weather. So you all probably had heard about Hurricane Fiona that did so much damage there in Puerto Rico. Then it went to the Bahamas and then it went up the coast and ended up in Canada. And there were several cruise ships that had to change their um, port calls because of um, Hurricane Fiona. Now we have another hurricane. As of 5 a.m. this morning, they changed that tropical storm Ian into a hurricane. So it's now a hurricane. And actually, they um, the officials there in Tampa have asked people to please evacuate. They said that, um, of course, the people like right along the coast there. But then I've read other stories that it talks about needing people in that entire county. I think it's called Hillsborough to um, be able to evacuate as well. And so, of course, when I hear about um, Tampa, I think about Tony and Jenny, and they don't know me from anybody, but uh, my prayers indeed are with them as they face this, because hurricanes, I know, are so very serious, and truly everybody in that area, and all of Florida, is in my um, prayers, and hopefully they'll be in yours as we have the storms come and make landfall there. So that is clearly going to affect some cruise itineraries. There are cruise ships that do sail out of Tampa, and as it comes around and heads up, I am sure that um, um, there's going to be itineraries affected. So let us know if you are on a cruise, no matter what cruise line it is. I want us all here together. So let us know what changes you are hearing about on your itinerary whether you're sailing this week or next week or whenever. And I did want to let you know that there are some um, cruises with Carnival that I've heard of right off that have had their itineraries affected because of what um, Hurricane Fiona did there at the dock in Grand Turk and Caicos. And so there are three Carnival cruises that are going to um, be affected right off and it's the Carnival Sunrise, um, let me see here, the um, Carnival Freedom and the Mardi Gras. And so the call, the port call that they were supposed to be going to Grand Turk and Caicos there is going to be replaced to going to Bimini in the Bahamas. Now, um, in their press release, they did say that if you are on these sailings and you had an excursion book there in Grand Turk, what they're going to do is credit that amount back to your onboard ship and sail. Um, is it the ship and sail card that they have there? And then... Um, it's the sale and sign account, sorry, that they are going to credit that back. And then once you are on board this ship, there will be excursions to buy in Bimini. And so you could just take that money that you get back and use it to book um, an excursion in Bimini if you'd like or for anything else that you want to use it for on the ship. Now, they did say some people were wondering, now am I going to get some extra onboard credit because of these changes? And as of right now, Carnival says you are not. And I absolutely get that. And I actually support Carnival in that, you know, we book these cruises and weather is always a factor and whether or not you're going to get to make all of the port calls that are expected. This is hurricane season. It is a hurricane season. And um, so not only is it hurricane season, but you know what? Um, weather can affect port calls um, around the year. It doesn't, it's not just in hurricane season. So I wanted to let you know, like the very first time Gordon and I went on a cruise, we were supposed to go into Victoria. It was an Alaskan cruise and we were not able to because it was so windy. And so 
the weather can always play a role, but I wanted to make sure that you all know that. Now, there are a few changes that go along with no longer calling in Grattan Turk, and so I thought I would just tell them to you really quick. But I would like to hear from those of you who are on other cruise lines, other sailings, and let us know because the damage that was done to the pier there in Grand Turk, they said, is not only going to be need to be repaired, but they are also going to have to have the experts in to make sure that it is still stable and um, still safe to have cruise ship stock there. And so clearly they've announced changes for the cruise sailings that are going to go on this week, but I don't know how long these sailings are going to be affected. So please do let us know. So the Carnival Sunrise um, sailed on Saturday out of Miami. And so they got to call in NASA yesterday and Half Moon K today, or Key today, however you say it. And today their day in Half Moon Key will be for 30 minutes longer. And then the following day will be a day at sea instead of going to Grand Turk. And then the next day, which was initially the sea day, they are going to be in Bimini, Bahamas. Now, on Saturday, I talked about it, but the Sapphire Princess restarted service on Saturday. And um, one of our Let's Go family members let us know that they were... Um, there and so there was a little bit of a mix up you couldn't park at the um, berth where the ship was docked so you had to drop off your luggage and then they go back and park and then they would show you back to where the ship was and so I don't know if that is just going to be the long-term arrangement there if that's going to be the berth there where the sapphire princess always is but please listen to my video if you missed it be aware that there are going to be some changes there if that is the way things are going to go for a while I I think everything would be okay, especially once they get it down. On the day that a ship restarts, and especially if it's a day that you're going to have to drop your luggage, go park somewhere else, take a shuttle back. Everyone just needs to get their legs under them there and learn how that works, both the people who um, work there as well as all of us who get to sail. So it's really exciting though, now with the Sapphire Princess back in service, that we're just due to have the Diamond Princess come back at the beginning of November. I've not heard any rumblings that that's not going to happen. If any of you have heard anything, let us know in the comments or send me an email. But I think it's great, and I'm really excited about the Sapphire Princess. Um, this week, they are going to the Baja Peninsula and the Sea of Cortez. During the time that she is there, they're going to be going to um, ports in... Um, they're going to be doing some Hawaii, some San Diego, and some Ensenada on the ports that they're going to visit, as well as the ones in Mexico. So I think that's fun. And then in December, she's going to reposition and go do those sailings um, clear from December through March, late March, um, up to Patagonia, Antarctica, and the Falklands. Now, the Sapphire Princess is the cruise ship that we are booked on for our group cruise that's going to go on January 20th of 2024. And so it'll be the next season. But I am really, um, I am so excited about that. Gordon and I have done Antarctica before, and we are really excited to do it again. But, um... But anyway, so she's going to head down there and do all of those sailings. Now, be aware if you're interested in Antarctica that Princess only does like two, I want maybe three sailings every year because they are, um, I want to say they're 16 day sailings and that actually go down and have scenic cruising in Antarctica. The rest of them, they just go around um, the horn there and then they come back up. And so I just wanted to let you know about that. Um, but I'm really excited that the Sapphire Princess is going again. We And I look forward to hearing from all of you who are on board to let us know how everything is happening there. Now, the next thing that I need to tell you about, and this is really important, um, so this is a little bit... Um, with the announcement by Canada, hopefully this will quit happening, but we have Let's Go Travel family members, um, Let's Go family members who um, flew from Australia, they went and toured some in Canada, and then they did their test to get on the Caribbean Princess to go on their long-awaited cruise, and they tested positive. Now, um, clearly with the testing requirement going away, that... Um, that is a moot point. But here's something that I think that you need to know if the testing requirement stays in place as it has thus far for people who are not vaccinated, here's what you need to know. So once they tested positive, they did upload the copy of their positive COVID test into the Medallion Class app. Then they got on the phone with Princess and ended up spending six hours on hold with Princess trying to get someone to let them know that they had tested positive and to make sure that Princess knew that they just were not a no-show because if you're a no-show on your cruise then you just lost your money there is no future cruise credit but if you test positive 
then you get your money back um, as a future cruise credit. And so what um, they ended up having to do, because they got three people on um, the, during that six hour time on hold, they got three different navigators with Princess who didn't know what to do about it. So finally they put on their mask, went down to the port, stood back I'm sure and said, we need to talk to somebody and let them know that we've tested positive so that you all know we're just not, not showing up for this cruise. So finally they said a very competent um, um, crew member came down, talked to them, took a picture of their documents and um, so that they would know that they had COVID and that they were not able to sail. And so then um, now they are going to have to work on it again once they get home because um, they were not able to hear anything back from Princess yet. Still not a word back from Princess. And so I just wanted to let you know, sometimes you have to be creative to let them know what's going on. Now I've got just a couple of other updates for you. We've got um, Code 4 for Life, our Let's Go family members, and they have their own channel. So take a look at that but they are on the Ruby Princess right now. And they said that things are indeed going much better than they were on their last Ruby Princess cruise. Um, they did try the um, Salty Dog Gastro Pub the last time they were on, and they were very disappointed, so they're gonna give it another shot this time. They say that the food so far in the main dining rooms and in um, the buffet are better than it was last time and that they are having a really good, um, wonderful time, that the crew seems to be doing better. Everything seems to have improved there. Now, um, they did just upload today. I noticed a video about tea time, the official tea time there on the Ruby Princess. And so, like I said, go take a look at theirs, uh, their channel. And now we've got a Let's Go family member who is on the Discovery Princess, and I really Really appreciate them. So they sailed out of Vancouver and um, if you look up in the travel documents they give you, they say that sail away time is 4.30. They did not sail away until almost midnight and the crew members said that that had always been the plan. Now um, clearly this person was on the sailing and I know who this person is and they're um, not technically challenged whatsoever and so clearly if Princess sent out any information about that, they did not receive it. And so um, um, they said that if they would have known, they would have spent more time in Vancouver. So there's that. So if you're sailing out of the majest on the Majestic Princess, be aware that um, it looks like maybe they're not going to later, and so check. Um, I wouldn't say don't get there until later in case your sailing happens to be one that's going at 4.30. Now, they did point out that when they stayed at the Hyatt there in Vancouver, they gave them an upgrade to the presidential suite for their loyalty. He said that there are several empty suites there on the Discovery Princess, and so why is Princess not up, um, like upgrading their elite members? Like That would be a really good question. I think that they should be doing that. And so along with that, I want to say the princess is taking away more and more perks that they give elite people. One of the things that I am really excited about with celebrity is celebrity is not. So you have elite status with um, celebrity that gives you the perks that you would get and actually more than you get with elite status on princess but they have two other levels above that. So if you are someone that cruises a lot, you are going to get um, so much more benefits from celebrity. I really like that. And um, I'm gonna learn more about those in person when I go on the cruise ship and I'll tell you about it. But I wanted to let you know about that and I can also share with you what they have on their website. Setting that aside, the next thing he said is that yesterday he thought the food was slightly above average in the main dining room and he tried Gigi's. So Gigi's is kind of the equivalent of Alfredo's if you're not familiar with that. Had a really great burger out on the Lido deck and the menu does seem to have lots, um, like have fewer options though. And you know what, both he and I agree it would be better to have fewer options and better quality. He did notice that the Love Boat um, hamburger is gone off of the Prince says favorites list. Um, overall, he said the ship still has the new smell, which is always fun. He said that the crew is very cohesive, excellent crew. Things seem to be going better, but he did point out the internet again. And he said, I can understand that in Glacier Bay having not as good of internet, but when you are in a major port Vancouver and you don't have good internet, that says something with the ship. And I did notice on my sail away video, I ended up having to use my phone service because the internet on even in Holland America's Koningsdam was so poor. 
So it sounds like they've got the same problem that um, Princess does. Now, um, I'll sail on Holland America more and let you know more about the internet. I would say that the internet overall was better than on the Princess Cruises I have been on, but when he said that about the port there in Vancouver, I it just kind of clicked in my memory there that I had a hard time there as well. Um, Let's see, got that. Now the last, um, yep, just one more update for you. And we've got someone on the Majestic Princess. They are just sailing. Um, they also um, clearly just left out of the same place there. Um, Wait, that's the Discovery Princess. I just told you about the Discovery Princess. The Majestic Princess is where our Let's Go family members are on, and they just embarked. They've got a back-to-back, 25-day -back, Trans-Pacific, and then an 11-day Queensland cruise. And so he said that the embarkation went just fine there. Um, the really interesting thing to me is they are elite, and Princess did give them an elite boarding card, but he said that there did not seem to be any rhyme or reason to the way they had people board the ship. Now, I know in some places, Places. They have like the elite area, then the platinum area, and then the rest. And then they always let the elite people board first. Like that's the way it was. Um, it comes to my mind in Fort Lauderdale right off, also in Los Angeles. But on this one, um, he said they were in line with everybody else. And so that seemed a little bit odd to me. But um, they, uh, oh, and they did have a suite, by the way. And usually suite people get on first as well. But that didn't seem to be working that day. Um, they were sailing out of LA and there were four ships in port that day. Um, how fun is that? The Sapphire Princess, which he said was docked down by the San Pedro Marino, Marina, and then the Celebrity Solstice, and the Carnival Panama panorama there goes out of Long Beach and so he said that they were on the ship by noon but they did not get their luggage until 5 15 you guys and they are even in a suite so um there's that they had lunch in the dining room in the club class section since they're in a suite and he said everything was really good just like they remembered it which that just made me so happy um every crew person that they had interacted with thus far were really great but the Harmony dining room there on the um the Harmony um, Specialty Dining, sorry, Harmony is like their um, Chinese, um, more Asian food um, specialty dining option. That's not going to be open on the that 25-day ceiling, and so I don't know why. <laughs> he said he doesn't know if it's due to staffing issues or something else. And then... Um, they did sail away a little bit later. They were supposed to go at four, and they got to see the Celebrity Solstice sail out, but they had not um, started to, and um, to um, they had not started to sail away yet by four o'clock. And then um, I really liked. He said they did go by the Lotus Spa, which I recommend if you want anything at the spa. Go on embarkation day because you get a better deal. Um, you can, of course, schedule something after, but like if you get a massage on embarkation day, you get extra time. Um, that is always a given, and so go ask if you want something. And um, but he said that the staff at the Lotus Spa seemed amazing. I really appreciate you all for sticking with me. Thank you all for sending me updates. Like I said, please, please, please send us your updates whether you're on a princess cruise, celebrity. I'm dying to hear about celebrity, so please. If you sail on Celebrity, enjoy Celebrity, um, have been on lately, or have just sailed before, let us know what to think about that. And I'll really look forward to hearing from you. If you can, join us tonight for our live. We're always at 9 p.m. on Monday nights, 9 p.m. Eastern Time. So that's 8, 8 p.m. Central, 7 p.m. Mountain, and 6 p.m. Um, Pacific Time. We'd love to have you with us. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do subscribe. We would love to have you in our Let's Go family. We need you. And the more and more people here that we have together, the stronger we are as a community and the brighter our future is together. If you appreciate these updates, please give this video a thumbs up and I'll be talking to you all again really soon. You all take really good care. God bless you. Love you. Bye-bye. <laughs>